Check audio sync. Of course, a plane is going by. What's up everybody and welcome back again. Now this week's video, we're gonna be talking about what movies like Saving Private Ryan, 300, Minority Report, and so many other movies have in common, and that's the film look. More specifically, we're gonna be talking about how to achieve the bleach bypass look. So, we're gonna jump into Resolve and I'm gonna show you how to create this look, but this video is gonna be jam-packed with so many other tips as well for color grading, so get ready. Roll camera. All right, so this week, as promised, I'm gonna take you through creating a professional color graded look. Now, the bleach bypass look is one of my favorites and it really creates like a gritty, high contrast look with that silver highlight quality to it. I'm really excited for this one. Now, right before we get started though, if you're new here, welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. New videos are going up on Mondays and Wednesdays, talking all about filmmaking tutorials, product reviews, and so much more. So if you're not already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss any new uploads. Now with that, let's get into it. All right, so here we are in Resolve and I'm gonna show you guys how to build out a fairly simple and elegant bleach bypass. It's gonna give us punchy colors, plenty of saturation, but it's still going to be refined and clean. First step, let's go to project settings. I'm working with red raw footage here, so let's go to color management. I want to bring this into Rec 709 quick so I have a good base to work from. Let's go DaVinci Color Managed here, uh, DaVinci Wide Gamut to give me that max latitude here to work with. Camera Raw Options, this is Red Raw. If you want to learn more about project settings, I'm actually going to link my DaVinci Resolve playlist uh, above because there are two videos in there all about project settings and another one all about color managed workspaces that you should really go check out. Okay, so step one, we're gonna build out a node tree here. I think let's add a second node here. So Alt S, Alt L here to create our layer mixer. And uh, then we're gonna do one more here and then we'll do two more and move them to the bottom. I'll show you why in a minute. Let's label these. So we got our initial or primary adjustments here. Uh, we're gonna group a few things into this node Layer mixer, I'm just gonna label that BP for bleach bypass, since this is where the magic is gonna happen. Uh, I'm gonna have a global or look refinement node here. Uh, then I'm gonna add a glow, and then let's make this one vignette here just to add some pop at the end. Okay, so this is what our node tree is gonna look like based on what I'm thinking uh, I'm gonna need for this image. So let's find our hero shot. We wanna find a frame in the video where the best, which is the best representation of this shot. So I'm gonna put it uh, somewhere around here. Our subject is in focus and we have these beautiful highlights here, which we're gonna end up working with as well. Uh, I have a feeling so. That really gives us a really punchy look. Here we go, first thing I'm gonna do is, to get this look right away, come to the first node here above the bottom layer, and we're gonna pull the saturation all the way down. Right, okay, nothing happened, right, so why? Well, if you've ever worked in Photoshop, you know there are uh, different blending modes. Res well, Resolve has that too. So we're gonna right click on the layer mixer here and let's go to overlay. Boom, just like that, there it is already coming through. This right here is your formula for creating the bleach bypass look. Can't do it without this step. Okay, so as far as the look goes, we're there, right? But let's tweak it some more to really get it where we want it and give it our own spin, right? We don't wanna just slap a LUT on things and let it go. We wanna actually create a really tasteful look here. So with the initial look created, I'm actually gonna go to my first node here. Let's start some push and pull here to really get in the ballpark. I'm gonna go to my color wheels first uh, and let's start playing. I think I'm gonna drag offset all together up around 30. There, I think that looks pretty good to me. Uh, let's come down to lift here uh, and really let's, let's crush the shadows back down as well. That looks good, but we're losing some detail on our subject here, so I'm just gonna keep adjusting gamma and gain uh, just to get it in the right area. It's a bit of a push and pull here, but that's okay. That's what we want. Last thing for now in our first note here is let's just white balance a bit. The sky actually seems like it's in a pretty good 
target here. We're actually pretty much there, but if you grab this and then in this instance, just click around here. If we look at the waveform, we're actually pretty well balanced. I'm just gonna mess around with the temp and tin here just a bit to get the image where I want it. All right, so let's move on to our global adjustment here. I just wanna do a couple of things to really make our image stand out a bit. I'm actually gonna to go to my log wheels here and let's bump the highlights up. I really wanna start pulling in some of that detail and luminance though. So I'm gonna put it maybe around 20, let's do 25, 26 here. Okay, so not much is happening mainly because there's not much there in the very high range to begin with. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull our high range down until we really start getting some detail back here. We can see it's starting to affect when we pull this down. I don't wanna pull everything in, but just start going down until we start pulling some more information. So there we've ended up kind of around 0.2, maybe just a little bit lower than that. All right, so before, after, we've done a lot here just with this one node. We see some detail coming through and we've popped our person out a little bit as well. Now I wanna actually go to mid detail here and just add a little gravy, just give it a little bit of, just give it something extra here, all right. So I usually go to the extremes here and then pull back to find a happy medium. So with this, I'm gonna go, we, you know, we're kind of ending up around the 11 or 12 range here, so I think I'm gonna leave it at that. All right, so there you go. Now, if I turn it on and off, you can see we've really done quite a bit of work here. All right, so now we've got it in a good place. I love how it's looking for our look, but one thing we still got a little bit of warm tones happening here, especially through these warmer greens. You can kind of look if you see in the ground. So I'm going back to my first node here uh, where we did our primary adjustments. Uh, and let's go to color wheels and let's just pull lift down a tiny bit towards blue. They're not much because I'm not going for that teal and orange look. I'm, I don't want to push it too far. Keep it mainly clean, but I just want to add a little bit more cool in the shadows. So let's do off and on. And I think we've really made some real progress here. All right. So one last thing on this one. Uh, we're a little too vibrant for me. Um, I want to remember we're creating something that looks a little bit gritty. So I want to create a mood here with this one. So let's take our saturation here and let's go up and down here. Obviously pushed way too far first. Uh, and then let's kind of land somewhere in the middle. I'm thinking around like 40 ish works for me. We've really just kind of taken the edge off. It looks a little bit more gritty. You know, we're, we're there. So with that, we're in a good spot. A few minor adjustments left to really just pull the look together. I'd say a big part of the bleach bypass is really creating that gritty, grungy feel. So let's go after our global node here and just add one more and let's do sharpening. So we'll label it and then let's go to our blur here and pull down on our radius, just really accentuate everything. You can see this really did quite a bit to add our grunge. You know, you, this really did quite a bit to add to our grunge look. All right, one thing I'm not liking though is just how blown out everything is around here. If you look between the trees and stuff, there's really no detail there anymore. Scopes will confirm we're pretty much crunchy in this area. So let's pull a quick key here and just bring back some dynamic range in these areas. So let's add a node. We're gonna go before primaries here just to make sure we have the max information straight from the raw file to work with. So we're gonna go to qualifier. Let's add some softness here in the low. And let's hit shift H just so we can see what we're doing and then really start just cranking it here until we're only pulling the highlights. Luminance is a great way to really pull a super accurate key because it's actually, it's, it's light information that it's using from the image. So it's going to be as clean as you can get every single time. Colors can bleed in keys into different things. You know, you may have similar color reflecting on the actor or whatever, but luminance is always gonna be super clean because it's just using the light information. All right, so here we have our highlights. Uh, I'm gonna go into my curves and just pull down from the top end here. Too much, uh, and then let's go back right around here. Okay, let's take a look at our scopes. We brought back a ton of dynamic range here. Let's do off and on. You can see we're actually looking much more pleasing here. All right, so last step, let's go to our glow here and just add our effect. 
Okay, we're really gonna we're really gonna keep pushing this. So let's set this to soft light, and then we're gonna go back to our and and then dial in our shine threshold back, and same with spread. Just to even it out a bit though, because it's looking it's looking too crunchy. I think. Let's go to global blend and really just dial it back a little bit here until it kind of really really kind of sits nice in the image there. All right, I'm gonna also add a power window here as well. So let's pull our person out a bit. Uh, give this some softness uh, on the exterior and then go under our curves. Let's pick a spot probably around here and just gentle adjustments, you know, pull up a bit and there we are. All right, so off and on, this node really helped pull all of this together. And we're really done here. I love where we ended up with this, small tweaks throughout, but it really just came together in the end. Last step, I would really go back and add some film grain to this. And that's really it. But let's go through and just take a look at what we've done here. Uh, turn off all the notes here and let's just go back one by one. So first, here's where we started. We did our bleach bypass base here by desaturating this one with our bottom layer and layer mixer we got here. Next up, we started working on some primary adjustments, did some push and pull and added a bit of cool tones to the image. Next, we started working on our global adjustments to just get the look to, to pull together. We then added some sharpness. We went back and recovered the highlights a bit just to add some dynamic range back. In came our glow after that to add some more grunge. We finally put a power window here just to pop our person out a little bit more. And that's our look. So finally, let's do one last look at the full, full effect that we've created here, full screen. Let's go. Okay, so that's it. A little bit here and there goes a really long way. We managed to create that really gritty look. It looks great. And it's got that crunchy bleach bypass look with that silver highlight quality to it. And everything really fell right into place there at the end. And we did that all by ourselves from scratch. All right, now, if you learned something or found this video informative or entertaining, then please make sure you're subscribed. Let's push this one out there, share it with your friends or anybody you think could use these tips and tricks. Leave a like and a comment down below. And until next time, go out there and create something. La de vedere.